Good morning folks, welcome observers. Today we're going to hit earthquakes which keep striking, astronomical observations, and a study on the major earth cycles. We also have a special live stream event coming tonight, details at the end of the show. And right now we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Solar flaring is low, we'll see why in the sunspot situation momentarily, but far side eruptive activity and plasma filament destabilizations have been prominent, including a CME release just behind the left side, the incoming limb a few hours ago. While those active regions will be facing Earth next week, right now the sunspot situation is numerous but spread and magnetically simplified. The big group on the south is almost perfectly split. Red negative on the left side emits the blue gives it a gamma magnetic class so we will keep watching today for delta class development and flares. Solar wind shows the coronal hole enhancement, moderate only, but drove us up to level 2 geomagnetic storm conditions overnight. The event is already subsiding this morning. Top quake of the last day, another big one, 6.9 that initially rang in at 7.3. And it was just about an hour after we broke down the results of the earthquake uptick during this watch period. Now, of the first 95 days of 2025, 14 of 26 magnitude 6s were in just the last 15 days. 8 of 12, 75% of the 6.5s were in the last 15 days. And 4 of 6, 66% of the 6.9s were in just the last 8 days. Let's hope this global seismic uptick dies down soon. Folks, up next they found a stellar duo that is doomed to explode. Now while this isn't the same physics exactly as we discuss for some stars, it is a good reminder, this is legit as well. Any way you end up dumping material onto a star, it can have a nova event. This pair at 150 light years away would look fantastic, but not be dangerous for Earth, and they say we'll be long dead before it happens anyway. Good paper up next describing one of the more simple explanations for why the mainstream weather narrative makes no sense. But it also takes a good look at the major Holocene changes, showing why the greenest of the green, Sahara Apox, was about halfway through the Holocene. The intertropical convergence zone used to ring out right over northern Africa. Now it is well to the south, feeding the Congo and regions near the African Rift. Lastly, folks, 10 points for suggesting that climate and magnetic pole shifts are cyclic and actually due to Earth's exposure to the solar wind. And then take all those points away for just blanket blaming Milankovitch cycles for that behavior. No, they do not match. One curve hits one of the time periods but not others, then a different curve might match up if you just focus on Le Champ and nowhere else. No, this has nothing to do with this at all. It's the sun's cycles of 1,000, 3,000, and 6,000 years, and then the galactic cycle of 12,000 years, as described and confirmed and supported over and over and over again by the evidence presented in your homework just below the video in the description box. Be sure to come back around at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time for the live stream. That's 8.30 p.m. Eastern. You can just come here and look for it or follow me on X, Twitter, Sun Weatherman. The link is going to show up there about 30 minutes early. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.